don't have to keep running Don't ignore what you feel There's no shame in the resting For the lame will be healed When it feels like it's over Like you've already Hi everyone, welcome to Real Land Fashion. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to sew a corset dress. To start, I'm going to be marking my chest line, my bust line, my under bust line, my waist line, my hip line, alongside with the length of the dress, depending on what you prefer. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the paper as well, and I'll connect it during a straight line. And then from the top line, I'm going to be marking my neck width. I'm using my actual neck width because we are sewing a queen and neckline for this dress. And then after the neck width, I'm going to mark half of my shoulder measurements. I'll also mark it on the chest line and I'll connect it. And then on this new line, I'm going to go down by one inch and then I'll connect it to the neck width. And after doing this, I'm going to divide this new line by two and I'm go, go in by 0 0.5 inch. On the chest line, I'll mark what are my bust measurements and then I'll connect it using the French curve as I'm showing you. And then after this, I'm going to be marking half of my nipple to nipple measurements on the bust line, on the under bust line and on the hip line and I'll connect it. Then after connecting on the waistline, I'm going to mark 0 0.5 inch on both sides for the darts. All together will be one inch while on the under bust line i'm going to add 0 0.25 into the 0 0.5 that is 0 0.75 i'll mark it on both sides on the bust line i'll go down by one inch and then i'll connect this point together then after connecting i'm going to divide my shoulder into two and then I'll connect it all the way to the bust line. And this point will be the bust point. And then from the bust point, I'm going to measure it down to the under bust. I have three inches, so I'm going to be marking three inches round the bust point, forming a circle. Then from this point, I'm going to go up by half an inch because I want this bust, this corset to cover my bust very well. Then I'm going to measure the dart on the under bust line. I go 1.5 inch, so I'm going to mark 0 0.5 on the point facing the center front and 1 inch on the point facing the armhole. After marking it, I'll connect it all the way to the bust point. So the line I just drew now is the actual circle that we drew earlier i don't want to use this actual circle because i want it to cover my post so i'm going so i'm going up by 0 0.5 inch so on this new point now i'm going to mark 0 0.25 inch on both sides and i'll connect it on this point i'm going to mark 0 0.5 inch and i'll go down by 0 0.5 inch also and I will draw a line as I'm showing you now. Then after this, I'm using a French curve to connect it to the dart. Then from here also, I'm going to connect it all the way to the underbust. Then on the chest line, I'm going to go down by 0 0.5 inch and I'll connect it as shown. After connecting it, I'm going to measure the dart on the chest line. I go one inch, so I'm going to mark one inch on the chest line as well. Remember, I've already marked out my quarter of my bust measurement. So from that point, I'll mark one inch while on the waistline, I'll mark quarter of my waist measurement plus the dart that is on the waistline that is one inch so everything seven inches i'll connect it and then i'll also add 
1.5 inch sewing allowance on both sides and connect. Then using my French curve, I'm going to connect from the darts all the way to the chest, the side seam. And then I'll also connect it all the way down to the under bust as shown. And then on the hip line, I'm going to be marking quarter of my hip measurement. And since there's no darts there, I will not be adding any darts to it. And then I'm also going to be marking my sewing allowance. So everything is 11 inches. So I'm going to minus 1.5 inch from this 11 inches. So that is 9.5 inches. And then I'll connect it. Then after doing this, I'm going to cut it out. This will be the skirt pattern that I'll be using. Then to continue with the corset, that is the top part of this corset dress. I'm going to cut out the line we drew out earlier. And then I'm also adding 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance on the shoulder line and then I'll cut it out. Pay attention to the lines I'm following while cutting. So after cutting you're going to labor it. Then after laboring I'm going to be drawing out my neckline. So to draw the neckline, I'm just joining the patterns together without the darts. And then I'll pick any points that I want the neckline to start from. Just depends on what I want. And I'll connect it all the way to the neck width. Then after connecting, I'm going to cut it out. And that will be all for the front pattern. So for the back pattern, I'm going to mark out just two points, which is my chest line and the waist line. I'm also going to be leaving a zipper allowance for the back. And then I'll mark my half of my shoulder measurements on the chest line and on the top line, and I'll connect it. Then I'll go down by one inch, and then I'll mark my actual neck width measurements and connect these two points. Then from this new line, I'm going to divide it by two. And then on the chest line, I'll mark quarter of my bust measurement. And then I'll connect it. And then on the waistline, I'm going to be marking quarter of my waist measurements. I won't be using that at the back. So I'll just be marking quarter of my waist measurements. And then I'll connect it to the chest line. I'm also adding 1.5 inch sewing allowance for the back as well. And I'll connect it. Then after doing this, I'm going to go up by 0 0.5 inch on that zipper allowance. There, I just want to reduce bulkiness at the back. Then after that, I'll cut it out. Then also, I'm going to be deciding where I want the yoke to start from. I'm going down by 0 0.5 inch also at the back, just like we did in front. And then I'll connect it all the way to the point where I want the yoke to start from. Then from this new point now, I'm going to go down by one inch from the neck, from the top line. And then I'll connect it, drawing my neckline for the back. I want to just create a design at the back also. So I'm using my French curve and I'm connecting it. Then after that, I'll cut it out. So that will be all for the back pattern. All you have to do is just to label it. Now for the skirt pattern, I'm going to be cutting out the, the line we drew out earlier. Remember, we drew out the line. And then from the side seam on the waistline, I'm going to be going in by 
one inch remember we added one inch for that while drafting the pattern so i don't want any that for the skirt so i'm just going to be removing it so that we'll have the actual waist measurements plus the sewing allowance this is this is the fabric i'll be using for this dress i have one and a half yards of ankara one yard of velvet and then one yard of lace so the first thing i'm going to be cutting is the peplum and to do this i'm going to be placing my fabric on fold the length of it on fold is 13 inches while the width is 26 inches so after doing this i'm still going to fold it further then from this point i'm going to divide my waist measurements by six inches because we are cutting a full circle so after dividing it i go four inches so i'm going to be marking the four inches from one point to the next as i'm doing now and then from here also i'm going to be deciding the length of the peplum i decided to use eight inches so four inches plus eight that is 12 inches so i'm going to mark 12 inches plus one inch sewing allowance half inch for the downside and half inch for the up so in all i'm marking out 13 inches as the length of this peplum so after marking i'm going to cut then remember to notch the necessary points as i'm showing you now then after notching i'm going to open one side up for the zipper and then from here we are going to place this on the lining and we are cutting it out then after cutting on the lining we are going to open it up please remember to cut the lining before opening it up and then on the lining as well i've also gone ahead to add a gum stay to it just to make it firm then after cutting the lining i'm going to open it up as i did and i'm going to place the fabric on the lining facing the right side together making sure that they are aligned and then pinning it down at the waistline and also at the downside just to secure everything in place then after pinning it down i'm going to sew all round using half an inch sewing allowance at the downside So when you're done, you're going to notch and you're going to top stitch it and face it to the right side. Then the next thing I'm going to do is to cut out the front pattern. And I also went ahead to cut the lining as well. And then I added interfacing too. So for the center front, I cut it on fold so when you open it up it should look like this while for the set the side pattern the side fronts i'm cutting it separately so when you open it it should be like this and then also remember to notch the necessary points on the cup pattern just to make sure you are not confused when you are sewing this helps me a lot because whenever I mess up the materials, it can be a bit confusing to know which part is for which. So when you notch it, it just helps you to know. Then also, I'm going to be adding lace to the center front and the side front. So I've gone ahead to cut out that pattern as well. And then after cutting it out, I'm going to, I'm going to arrange them as I'm doing. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew it all around just to secure everything in place. After sewing it all round, what we are going to do is to place the center front to the side front. And then I'm going to be sewing and closing the darts using 0.5 inch sewing allowance. I'm also going to do the same thing on the other side as well. And then for the cup part of this corset, I'm going to be using a wadding instead of a bra cup. You can use a bra cup if you choose. I normally use a bra cup, but in today's video, I decided to use a custom made bra cup. So I'm using a wording and I place the pattern on the wording and cut it out, adding allowance to only the dart line. Then after cutting it out, I'm going to join the center front to the side fronts 
please pay attention to the part that we notch. That's the part we are going to be joining together. So using half an inch sewing allowance, you're going to join them. So for the bra cup, I realized that the wording was too light for me. So I decided to double it. So instead of having four pieces, that is two pieces for each, I ended up having eight pieces. That is four pieces for each bra cup. So what I did is I joined the parts that is shining to the parts that is not shining together. Then I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'll sew all round, joining it together. So by the time you join it together, instead of having eight pieces, you end up having four pieces. So by the time you are done joining it, we are going to join it at the dart line as well, just like we did for the fabric. So when you join it, remember the part that is shining will be the part that will be outside, while the part that is not shining will be inside. So after you are done doing that, you are going to place it on the bra cup like so, and you are going to press it down. The advantage of a custom made bra cup is that it fits perfectly to the pattern, so there will be no need for any manipulation whatsoever. So when you're done joining the center front to the side front, this is what you should have. So you're going to open it up and press it down. Then after pressing it out, you're going to join the bra up to it. So pay attention to the fact that there is half an inch sewing allowance all round after I was done pressing it. If it is more than half an inch, just cut off the excess. The most important thing is that we have half an inch sewing allowance round the bra up. So what we are going to be doing now is to join it at the dart line. So we are going to be joining the dart of the bra cup to the dart of the downside of this corset, making sure that they are well aligned. And then you pin it down. Using a pin is so important when it comes to corsets. So after pinning down, you're going to join the top side of the corset as well, like I just did. So the moment you are done joining the upside alongside the dart point, you are going to pin the remaining parts. Take note that without pinning, it may appear as if the bra cup is longer than the down part of the corset. But when you pin it, everything is going to fall in place and it will be easy for you to sew. And then also take note that you are not sewing on a straight line, you are sewing on a curve point. Sewing on a curve point is quite different as to when you are sewing on a straight line. And then by the time you are done sewing, this is what it should look like. The top part is well aligned. So after doing that, you are going to join the remaining parts of the bra cup to the downside of the corset. So you're going to do the same thing. Join the up part first, making sure that it is aligned, and then you join the remaining parts, pinning, pinning it all the way down. And then another thing to pay attention to when you are sewing a corset is your ability to stick to the sewing allowance. If you are not sewing on the exact 0.5 inch sewing allowance, the corset may appear like it was not properly done. So try as much as possible to stick to the sewing allowance. And then when you are sewing, you're going to be removing the pin as you go. Don't remove the pin when you are not done sewing at a particular point. So you only remove the pin when you are done sewing. This will make it easier for you to sew. So by the time you are done joining one side of the bra cup, you're going to join the other side as well. And then when you're done, you're going to do the same thing for the lining. The only difference is that you will not be adding a wording to the bra cup. You're just going to be using the lining as it is. Then I've also gone ahead to cut out the yoke for this dress. And I also cut the lining as well, alongside with the lining. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the lining to the fabric facing the right side together and I'm going to sew the neckline. So when you're done joining using 0.5 inch sewing allowance, you're going to be joining the yoke to, to the corset. And then in order to join this, you're going to be leaving out one inch from 
the side seam of the yoke. Remember, we added one inch for the chest dart while drafting the pattern. So we have already removed that chest dart. So we're going to be removing that one inch from it. So when you're done joining the yoke to the corset, we are going to be joining the lining to it as well. So how we're going to do it is to place the fabric to the lining, aligning the necessary points together. Make sure that they are well placed. Use, using a pin, you're going to join it together. Then after joining this, you are going to be sewing using half an inch sewing allowance. When you are done sewing, turn it to the right side to confirm you did the right thing. Then after you have done it and everything is the way you want it to be, you are going to notch it. Then after notch it, notching it, you are going to open it, turn it to the right side, face the allowance to the lining and you are going to top stitch it all the way to the other side. And after doing this, this is what it should look like. So for the back pattern, I've also gone ahead to cut it out for the yoke alongside the downside. And I've also cut out the lace and then I've added the lace to the downside of the back pattern as well. Then for the yoke, after cutting it out, I'm going to be removing the pattern from this. And then take note that I did not add any sewing allowance at that cuff end. The reason is because I'm going to be adding a button at that point and I'll be using a loop to join it together so what you're going to do is to place the lining to the fabric facing the right side together and we're going to join the neckline and then after joining the neckline together you are going to turn it to the wrong side and then remember to add the loop that we are going to be using to connect the button to and then when you place it inside you're going to sew it's all the way down using half an inch sewing allowance when you're done you're going to notch it and then turn it to the right side and top stitch and this is what you should have i've done the same thing for the other side but this one i did not add any loop to it so this other side i'll be adding the button then after doing this for the downside of this back i've joined the lace to it and then after joining the lace I'm going to be adding the yoke, joining the yoke to it as well. Then, so I'm going to place it as shown, and then I'm going to join it together using half an inch sewing allowance. I'm joining it on the other side. After joining it, I'm going to place the lining on it like this, and I'm going to sew. Then I'll turn it to this side and I'm top stitch it. And then when you're done, this is what you should have. After this, I'm going to be joining the back to the front at the shoulder line alongside the side seam using the sewing allowance that we added earlier, half an inch for the shoulder and then 1.5 for the side seam. Then when you're done joining, you should have something like this. Now we're going to be joining the peplum to this dress. So you're going to notch the middle part of the peplum and you're going to pin it to the middle part of the corset. Then after pinning it, you're going to pin it all the way down and you join it together using half an inch sewing allowance. For the down part of the dress, we are going to be using the pattern to cut for the back and for the front. The only difference is that we are adding zipper allowance to the back and while for the front we are cutting it on fold so you're going to join the lining to the velvet and you're going to join it at the side seam my secret to sewing the velvet is just to be patient with it reduce the speed of the sewing machine and sew it or if you find it difficult joining the lining to the velvet at once you can join the lining separately and then you join the velvet separately. Then at the end of the day, you join it together, either at the waist, at the waistline and on the hemline. Then when you're done joining the side seam 
this is what you should have and then after that you're going to join it to the top part of the dress using half an inch sewing allowance You're done joining the waistline together, you're going to add zipper to this dress. For the sleeve, you're going to be using your normal sleeve pattern for this. I have a video where I showed how to draft out a basic sleeve pattern, so you can check it out in case you don't know how to do that. Why for the puff sleeve that we have on top of the basic sleeve pattern, we're going to be placing our normal basic sleeve on a fabric that is placed on fold. I'm measuring four inches from the top line and that's where i'm placing the basic sleeve pattern from the normal basic sleeve i'm going to be measuring how long i want this sleeve pattern to be i'm using six inches so from this point i'm going to connect it all the way to the top point of the fabric and then after connecting it I'm going to divide this new line by two and then I'll go out by half an inch sewing allowance. Then I'll connect it. Then after connecting, I'm going to measure from the top line to that six inches point. And then I'll measure it on the other side as well and I'll connect it during the straight line. Then I'll cut it out. So this is the slip pattern I'll be using. Then I've also gone ahead to cut out the lining for this one and then I've closed the downside of the sleeve. So from here I'm going to mark out the 6 inches length that I need and then from this 6 inches length I'm going to be pleating the remaining parts together like so to form the, that puff that we have. Then when you pleat it you join it together. And that will be all for the puff sleeve. So all you have to do now is to join it to the basic sleeve pattern. Joining the middle part together, pinning it down and then join it all the way down. So by the time you are done joining it together like this, you're also going to join it at the side seam and then after joining it at the side seam you're going to attach it to the dress and that will be all for today's video if you did enjoy this video please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thank you